call the uh, meeting of the Common Council to order. And uh, we'll start out as usual with our Pledge of Allegiance. And Councilman Thompson, would you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay, did you all have a chance to uh, take a look at the regular uh, meeting minutes for July the 24th? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. And it is it's nothing. Thank you. Likewise, a special meeting on uh, July the uh, 23rd. Uh, did you have a chance to read those minutes? Motion to approve. Motion made by Goodman to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Thompson. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand and it is unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Communications. The information sheet from the animal shelter. Animal this staggering was, numbers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the ladies, when they after the last <clears throat> meeting, um, uh, Mrs. Landis had handed this to me. They had forgot to hand that out, but asked if we could include this in uh, your packet for you to review, just as additional information about the cat population. And if you recall, uh, those of you that were present, Mrs. Campbell was here, one of our city residents, and had raised some concerns about the cats. Well, this kind of <laughs> gives you a different <laughs> perspective. Um, and then kind of saddled with that, uh, Mr. Gris Grigsby, uh, who was friends of the shelter, uh, had stopped by and asked to just kind of give you guys a little more information about their organization and kind of how they feel they may be able to help. I put it under communications because it was more of a communication um, in addition to what you guys have already heard from Janet from the shelter. So. Is Mr. Grigsby here? I am. Uh, would you like to step up to the podium, sir, and tell us about uh, Neuter and Scooter? Good Identify evening. Yourself, sir, for I, am, I am Robert E. Grigsby. Um, a handful of private Fulton County residents and myself have formed a group called the Friends of the Neuter Scooter. Neuter Scooter is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization which offers cost-effective means to neuter, spay, health screen, inocu inoculate uh, felines. Uh, neuter Scooter has been in operation for about 14 years. They nearly monthly visit Hobart, Gary, Valparaiso, uh, Orsall, Rochester, Logansport, and some some towns in uh, West Ohio. Uh, they're very serious in their endeavor to eliminate feral cat populations. <coughs> here, here. Uh, Dr. Tess Peavy and her staff, uh, uh, again, are, are very serious in that endeavor. Uh, we contacted them. Uh, friends of the neuter scooter contacted uh, Doc Peavy in September of last year and offered her to come visit the town and uh, and, uh, and render her services in uh, in that Excuse time me, sir I'm, I'm not familiar with dr. Peavy dr. Tess Peavy is the, the administrator the de facto uh, owner of neuter scooter okay okay um, uh, as I said they've been in business for about 14 years um, the, the countless tens of thousands of animals have been have been neuter and spayed uh, under her under her guidance uh, in uh, since September of 2017 friends of the neuter scooter has generated uh, nearly three thousand dollars in funds with four different fundraisers which has allowed her to come to town to the 4-H building which we have subsidized the rental of uh, Doc Peavy has uh, generated great interest in wanting to come here every month, so there is certainly interest on her part to continue, continue coming here. Uh, to date, in the seven clinics that Dr. Peavy has been offering her services, she has neutered and spayed 360 animals. 
Um, many are feral, uh, some are pets, but uh, again, the endeavor is to neuter and spay and either hopefully find homes for these animals or be released back into the population where they certainly can't, uh, can't repopulate. And this is the uh, program we hear about where you see a cat with a notched ear if they've been... Correct. They, they tattoo uh, neuter scooter inside of the ear. Oh, really? Uh, they uh, can identify the animals that way with their records. So they, they offer a host of other services, uh, uh, you know, all inoculations, health screenings, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and again, a very cost-effective uh, approach. She charges twenty dollars to neuter or spay feral animals, uh, provided they're caught in a trap and, and brought to her. Yeah, that's certainly cheap enough. Indeed, indeed. So we feel that there is simply a, a lot of interest in town. Uh, that uh, just a handful of us have been able to generate, uh, you know, that mm -hmm. money and our contact with the people uh, with these fundraisers indicates that there is ample interest. In, in fixing the problem. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the greatest obstacle is simply getting the word out there and advertising and promoting that there are alternatives to dropping off animals at the shelter. Uh, and again, this is uh, separate from the animal shelter. You know, we uh, hope to you know, believe that we share the same interest and the same goal in uh, fixing the, the feral cat population. Now, when you're providing the service out at the fairgrounds, is the shelter bringing you animals? Uh, they are not. They are not. Okay. <coughs> okay. okay. Do you have any idea why they're not participating with you? Um, I believe that they have their own program in place. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, students from Purdue, some doctors from there are coming in or they're taking animals outside of the shelter. I'm not quite sure. But um, no, no, we are at this time not not working hand in hand with the animal shelter, but we should be. Obviously, uh, we're all we, we feel that we're all on the same team and we have the same goal and endeavor, and that is to completely eliminate the feral cat population. And when the ladies were here last time, of course, this all it all comes down to money for the animal shelter as such. I would think if there's a a parallel service going on ought to be joining together. Absolutely, absolutely. At least promoting the ability to have to have another cost-effective means to uh, to have your animals uh, maneuver or spade. And your purpose for coming before us was just to make us aware of your services. Correct. We believe that the information is simply not being disseminated throughout the community. Uh, to let them know that in fact there are some alternatives to to the shelter. What what are your plans for reaching out to the shelter? Um, continued fundraisers. We are working with WROI and the the Sentinel. Uh, they place ads for us and uh, blurbs for community events. You know to let people know. But certainly uh, that's just scratching the surface as far as putting the information out there in front of the townsfolks. Um, sad to say, when we first hosted the our initial clinic, the Nuvers Bay Clinic, I had to ask someone where the 4-H Fairgrounds was located. So, uh, you know, a sign in town with an arrow pointing, you know, 4-H Fairgrounds would be a, would be a good start. Uh, uh, I believe uh, if we're really serious about the problem and taking this, taking this up, we have to let people know that we ha are having these clinics, uh, a banner, across Main Street two weeks before announcing that we're hosting a clinic. Uh, Dr. Peavy has a clinic in, uh, I believe it's her Gary Clinic or Hobart Clinic. She's, she's capable of fixing 200 animals at a time and she's often full. That clinic is often full that she will actually, her and her staff will neuter spay 200 animals uh, in a day. So the ability to, uh, to fix this problem is there. Uh, community awareness and getting the information out to them is key to making that happen. Any uh, questions from the council? The the money that's been raised to date has that been used to uh, get the facility at the fairgrounds, or is that used to actually help defray the cost of the neutering and both? Both. Both. We mm -hmm. have been paying uh, bi-monthly 
where Dr. PV pays one month and then we pay the next. Um, Mr. Clausen uh, at the Fair Board has offered generously uh, a $200 rental on one of the buildings, which is just perfect for Dr. PV. When she entered the building, she actually said this is just perfect for us. And uh, she was just ecstatic to be able to come back on a monthly basis. So we are subsidizing the building and we're also offering uh, on a, on a per need basis, uh, people who bring animals in and just simply can't afford to uh, to have them fixed. So, for people listening and for us, how does somebody go about making a donation to the to your 501c? Well, the the 501c3 is is actually Dr. Peavy's organization. The, oh, okay. the Friends of the Neuter Scooter. We're here to facilitate her coming to town okay. uh, and we're offering our services. We're not structured <coughs> yet, we're not quite that organized, but okay. we can certainly be contacted and, and help uh, uh, you know, show people where the money can go uh, either through direct payments to uh, Mr. Clausen at the fairgrounds or to Dr. Peavy uh, you know, where they can receipt out for the 501c3. Okay. Another option is actually to show up at the clinic uh, you know, it's a sight to see, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 animals lined up in their carriers and everyone mewling. Uh, Dr. Peavy is, is a very personable person and just loves what she does. <clears throat> and once the animals are released, she'll give a very well-informed speech uh, on a topic uh, of the day. Uh, and it would be, a, it would be something, uh, you know, for someone to just show up at the clinic uh, and offer, offer any help or fund, funding to Dr. Peavy. And, uh, and anyone who might show up there. Dr. Peavy, uh, she'll see someone who comes in with a, a mother cat and five or six kittens and the person just shrugs and they say I don't know what to do and she'll give them a, a generous you know break on uh, on having the animal spayed because there's no better time uh, to have them neuter or spayed than uh, right after birth, after giving birth. It, it sounds like a, a very good service sir. I, I would uh, offer this piece of advice uh, we support along with the county the animal shelter financially if you're going to get any traction with this program you need to develop a relationship with the animal shelter uh, meet Janet uh, work in accord together and I can't imagine where they would not be open to uh, taking advantage of, of your services uh, it is a huge problem and it, it can be very expensive. We certainly hope that we can develop a rapport with Janet. I think well, that's a necessary uh, pooling of resources. Yeah, I, I think that's a success. necessary step for you to get some traction in, in this community. Mike, am, am I off base there, Council? Anybody disagree with that? No. The, uh, the operation of two entities probably isn't going to get it accomplished. If I may ask a question, do you have a schedule of when Dr. Peavy will be at the fairground? I mean, is that set out a year in advance or? Um, she has just recently formed the 501c3, so she has a lot on her plate. Uh, we were scheduling two or three clinics out at a time. Her next clinic is scheduled for this coming September 2, okay. which is this Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, to my knowledge, she has not scheduled out beyond that. Has she, Dan? No. no. Okay. And, and where is she? She's based on the, the West Coast. Uh, I've not yet uh, nailed her down to ask her what brought her to this neck of the woods. Um, I brought my cat to her clinic in Valparaiso 11 years ago, so she's been in operation for quite some time. It's a family. It is her and her husband, uh, two of her children, and then a, and then a staff. And uh, they come to Indiana uh, just about once a month or every 40 days, and they hold these clinics. Well, I would, I would offer that if you could uh, give us some notice as to when she's going to be in town, we could uh, intercede and uh, pro provide, uh, work with Janet to provide a meeting with uh, the two entities and uh, see what, uh, what can come of it. I can certainly provide uh, you folks with an outline and, uh, and a schedule of events. Okay. I'd love to. Anything yeah. else? Uh, Mr. No. Yeah, if I could add. <clears throat> yeah, I keep in touch with Janet on a regular basis. You probably understand why. But, uh, yeah, she puts it on their website once I let her know so that it's on their website. But the reason why she, they don't bring any to us is she has another separate 
uh, low cost neuter clinic in Kokomo that she runs cats down to, I believe it's every other Wednesday. So that's why she doesn't try to take up on those spots that we have over. Okay, and um, I guess I'm a little confused. We have a lot of feral cats in the community. Uh, and she reported how many had been neutered, spayed the last time here, and it was it was a it was a nice number, but it wasn't a huge number. Uh, I would think joining forces would be the way to approach it, and then advertise the heck out of it that bring these cats in. Letting people know that they can be neutered, spayed for twenty dollars should be an incentive for anyone that's feeding cats anyway. But uh, it's. Uh, you know that's a pretty negligible amount of money to have an animal you know taken out of the reproduction cycle sure well again sir it can't help uh to sit down and talk the two parties so mm -hmm. let us know and we'll uh, we'll see if we can get a meeting set up very good thank you thank you okay now i would like to open the public hearing for the 2019 budget. <coughs> Shout out, turn the floor over to you. Um, in your packet, you'll see the notice to taxpayers, uh, which is the same figures that we discussed in our council budget hearing. And essentially, it uh, reads that our total budget estimate is seven million three hundred fifty seven thousand one hundred for 2019 and our estimated maximum funds to be raised is three million one hundred and two thousand one hundred twenty one and then the, the current tax levy is listed as two million eight hundred and seventy four thousand four hundred yeah seventy four thousand four hundred sixty four so uh, there were no changes or additions to the council budget hearings that we held in July. So that's what these budget numbers were based on. And just so we know, this is just our tax supported funds and, uh, excuse me, these are all of the funds that are both tax supported and um, funded outside of property taxes with the exception of our utilities. Does not include the utility budgets. Uh, those will come to you in December, typically, November or December. Any uh, questions, council members? <coughs> if not, I'll open it up to the floor. Are there any questions from the uh, from the gallery from the floor? Okay. With that being the case, I'll uh, close the public hearing. Just so you are aware, the actual ordinance will come next month's meeting, okay. September meeting for the next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> we got some. Uh, before we move over into unfinished old business, we do have some unfinished business that's not here. <coughs> uh, after the last meeting, I was informed of a procedural error that, as the chairman of the council, I have to take the responsibility for. Uh, we all should keep in mind uh, we had a, an ordinance brought to us by Councilman Fitzwater and that wasn't on our agenda it wasn't advertised so the public did not have a chance to come forward and discuss that ordinance we aired there uh, I had two uh, parties outside of here mention that to me uh, not sure they would have been here but they did mention it to me that we were out of order. Uh, with that being said, if there's anyone out there listening who, uh, one of those people who approached me or anybody else who uh, would like to uh, have that on an agenda to discuss, all they have to do is contact Shada and we'll get you on the agenda. But I apologize for that and uh, we should not have had all three votes that night at least. So we, we won't be doing that again. 
Okay, with that being said, uh, we have well, some... Ted, there yes. was some additional uh, unfinished business regarding the request from the shelter for that additional 5000 I did omit that off of the agenda before you move on to the next item. It's not on here either? It's not. No, I hand wrote... I, you hand wrote it? I hand wrote it on Brian's because I, I totally oh, forgot about that request. Hmm? I'm supposed to tell him? No, yes. you're, you're, you're special. <laughs> you're, special. <laughs> you're special. So there's some unfinished business on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. You didn't write it on mine. Okay. Would you Would you want to tell us? I, I ran out of time. <laughs> Councilman Goodman, would you want to tell us what that unfinished business was? Um, they're requesting an increase of five thousand dollars to their budget from us. Discussion. What's the, reason for how, how do you, what's the reason for the increase? Uh, Janet, at the la you weren't here at the last meeting. Uh, she had came and presented. They were trying to expand their spay and neutering program, and she had presented, and correct me, counsel, if I'm wrong on any of this, that they were looking for this additional funding to help offset those costs and kind of focus their efforts on that spay and neuter. Well, we know a guy that's starting. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I know. Timely. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, the timing of it came, I mean, we had, had already moved forward with where we were going with our budget and had things kind of there. Yeah. And due to timing, we tried to get our special meeting in before tonight's hearing. However, it just, it just didn't work with everybody's schedules. So if the count if it so pleases the council to increase we wouldn't be able to do it out of the general out of their actual line item I, I, I could transfer from another line item to that one to increase it um, or I could look at one of our other funds if you guys choose to increase that amount uh, what's I their timeline you wanted to I, I think she was anticipating for next year's budget is so we could table it until we can see if we can get yep folks working together Maybe that's, that's certainly unique. your call mm -hmm. <coughs> Any, anybody want to make that suggestion I was gonna say if that was a motion I'd second I'll if not motion. thank okay. you so okay. that was my thoughts exactly table it. motion to table the request for a five thousand dollar increase to the animal shelter budget by Goodman seconded by Garrett those in favor signify how about, about postponing that table Okay, I know you hate that table. No, that would oh. be the attorney. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he whispering to you again? Uh, it's a terminology thing. Again. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, if we table, we don't have to bring it up again. That's right. Correct. That's right. Correct. That's right. I, prefer the, I, I prefer the motion that I seconded. Table it? Yes. Okay. Okay, those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. Any other uh, unfinished old business that we don't have on our agenda? Mm -hmm. no. Sorry. That's okay. Can't avoid Had a few things go on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item for old business is um, the county's request for financial support for the new jail. Uh, most of you were at the uh, dual meeting uh, a few weeks ago out at the fairgrounds, and we had. Uh, quite a discussion about the the building of a new jail and um, the uh, uh, three different taxes were briefly mentioned uh, uh, the special low tax and the uh, correctional low tax that the state has established that would uh, allow counties to wrap their arms around some funds uh, that would go directly towards the building of a correctional facility. There would be no splitting out of those low funds to any cities or townships. It would go directly for that purpose. Uh, and those of you who've uh, been aware of that process, I think some of you were at the county's meeting <coughs> this past week, uh, know that those two taxes were uh, approved by the county council. The, the question at hand for the city is the current public safety low at tax. The uh, uh, county is, uh, is uh, suggesting uh, or looking at raising that tax and asking uh, Rochester and Akron and Kiwana and Fulton 
to uh, take our share because that one would be distributed out to everybody take our share of the increase and give back to them to put towards the building of the correctional facility Did I explain that right Jim yes <laughs> <laughs> Jim's from Akron uh, so that's that's what we were asking if you remember in the meeting uh, we were asked if we could have an answer by the 21st which of course the 21st has come and gone there were lots of reasons why we couldn't get together so we're bringing it uh, to the floor tonight um, with that being said we have uh, have uh, several pieces of information that we want to make available to the council um, one of them being the uh, uh, blueprint of the Adams County Jail that has been discussed as uh, the pattern, the model, the model for the for our new jail. Um, Shada, do we have that on the, on the do board? Do you want to do that or did you want to do the Well, okay, before we discuss the, uh, the layout here, there's a, a video that we have that the Adams County folks put out as a press release that's uh, less than a minute, but it's about the new jail, and it's it's a pretty nice video. But you might like to see it if you can see it. Yeah, let's see if I can get it to go full screen. I'm not sure if I can. We'll see. Failed to download a faster. Fabulous. We are in desperate need of an IT person. <laughs> Shocked that lady. That's <laughs> 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 what you get for talking. Just shocked. Well, my speakers aren't working. saying is I'll just kind of give a the about here out almost um, after almost a year and a half of construction the Adams County law enforcement facility is almost open for business it was a 57,000 square foot facility and uh, started in the summer of 15 the old jail was only uh, able to hold 60 inmates and I mean, it's, it's comparable to our situation and our understanding is the county officials like the design of this and the model of this particular facility and um, it includes the jail sheriff's office 911 and it will this new jail now holds can hold 189 inmates and uh, it goes through the purchase of it that they um, the jail sits on 14 acres in Adams County and uh, they were supposed to set to move in in mid-February and I'm not sure what the date was on this was that last year Ted yes that they moved in yes so, and then they indicated that they were they saved three and a half million under they came in three and a half million under budget uh, but they were kind of talking about the same situation we're running into the overcrowding 
and that kind of circumstance that they they were facing as well and um, so that was just kind of a view of what their new facility looks like. Excuse me, Sean. Mm -hmm. And their population again is? The county population uh, They're is 14,000 14, more than Yeah, Fulton so about 35,000 and we're about I thought, 20. I thought so. Yeah. Thank you. Rough numbers, you're welcome. This is Decatur. Then, yeah, so it's in Decatur, uh, Indiana, which is um, east of here in Adams County. And now, this will open up. Come on, you know you want to. <clears throat> Technology, it always works when you don't want it to. If, uh, if anyone cares to see that video in a better state on your individual computers, you can go to the Adams County New Jail Facility, and uh, that, will, that video will come up. Uh, couple of the points made that uh, shot it didn't mention there was uh, they uh, paid 1.5 million dollars for the land to put the jail on uh, they used 14 acres they were required because of the location to buy 169 acres Hello. Uh, yeah uh, the auditor said farmers don't like breaking out pieces of property for sale so uh, we have, we had to buy the whole parcel so they've got some real estate for sale uh, they did come in under budget by three and a half million dollars and uh, ended up with 189 beds instead of the 213 they are uh, after a year and a half now they are uh, uh, utilizing for their personal use two-thirds of that pod system and if you notice on your print that pod system takes up roughly one third of the complex. The other two thirds are office facilities. I got some extra copies. Uh, the uh, the beauty of the of the uh, pod system is, like I said, they got 189 beds out of it. <coughs> the third that they're not using, they're farming out to the federal penitentiary uh, program. And if you uh, work with federal prisoners instead of uh, state, you pick up extra money. It's 54 bucks a head instead of uh, 35. So uh, it's it, it, the auditor told me it is not a uh, profit center by any means, but it's a contribution to their overhead. Um, that is. That is the facility that has been discussed as the Adams County Jail, or correctional facility. You wanted to share some numbers with uh, folks? Sure. Um, as, as the fiscal officer for the city, anytime you start talking finances, my head always jumps to numbers. You guys have known, you should know that by now. So uh, we were presented, the county had actually given us the Umball report that they received back in, I believe it was June 21st of 2018. So these, what I had presented in your packet were two uh, spreadsheets. One is, and these are all illustrative, and they are based on the numbers from the Umball report that the county received regarding a bond payment on a $24 million bond. So what I did is I just took their numbers. Um, now we all know income tax is always ebb and dip. So there's going to be years that it's going to be higher, years it's going to be lower. So what these are, these are just uh, stagnant numbers based on 2018 income. So this is from the DLGF certified report that's available on uh, the DLGF website uh, for our income taxes. And if it ever loads, <laughs> it loaded before the meeting. Uh, DLGF is the Department of Local Government Finance that's uh, between them and the State Board of Accounts are the two agencies at the state level that we, us, county, all municipal taxing districts, municipalities are required to report to. And uh, so what I did is I took uh, essentially our existing current LIT rates, which is local income tax, and that is our, our current rates. Good gravy, come on. Um, for 
2018 and show, split them out by each one of our, why could you not open it? Um, and split out for our, each of our taxing districts. So essentially there's $980,800 that comes into public safety. That's our current public safety low at tax that we currently receive. Um, because this jail is only based in public safety. There are additional income taxes that all taxpayers, or that all income earners, I should say, in Fulton County pay. And that is your certified shares, your property tax relief, economic development, and public safety. Those are the four currently right now that everybody who has a job works in Fulton County pays. So for this particular purpose, because it is just dealing with public safety, I only did an illustrative uh, income uh, imp impact statement, which apparently that one's probably not going to load either, um, for the taxpayers' benefit. But for purposes of this, Fulton County receives 62.62% of the public safety. Rochester receives 31.47. Akron receives 2.82. Kiwana 2.51. And Fulton 0.58% of the current public safety income tax. Uh, broken out numbers. Uh, respectively, it's $614,185 to Fulton County, $308,690 to Rochester, $27,615 to Akron, $24,605 to Kiwana, $5,705 to Fulton. Then the next section on, of course it's not going to work, um, is the new taxes that were just passed by the county last, last week. So these taxes will not actually take effect until <coughs> January 1st. Um, all income tax is based on, they have to collect the tax, so they'll collect all of the tax in 2019 out of all of our paychecks, and then come 2020 is when they will actually release those um, uh, to the county for payment. Or so they'll, they'll submit those uh, disbursements to the county in 2020. Those will total, if based upon this year's, again, illustrative information, this year's income, uh, respectively the special purpose tax, they'll receive $980,800. And then for the correctional rate, they will receive $784,640 for a total of just over 1.7 million, just out of those two new taxes that they've imposed. So if you slide on over to the, on the spreadsheet, um, Tina, yeah. if you would mind come up here and grab some of these sheets. No, I've got plenty of copies if you want to. If you've got extra mm -hmm. copies, this I sheet, do. and anybody in the audience would like to have it, it's a very significant sheet. There. I, I've got Tina. She is on it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Excuse me, Charlotte. Yes. Say, this might be uh, Dennis, do you know how to operate that? <laughs> He's an <laughs> IT guy. Good luck. Hmm. I'm see a former that. IT girl, but yep, we'll sometimes see. it doesn't always work. Um, it's on my job. Any, anyone who would capture one of these uh, spreadsheets, if they want to take it home and peruse it, across the top, Shada has different income levels. And you well, I'm not, I'm not to that one yet. Okay. I'm on this one okay. right now. Okay. Let's finish with this one and then we'll okay. jump to the other one. Don't do overload hang, hang on Hang in there with me. Don't do overload. <laughs> uh, because the county has only talked about two potential increases. Uh, one of them being 0.2% to the public safety and the other being 0.3%. Uh, what I did on my spreadsheet was, is I, for again, because I was trying to, to keep this simple and just use the numbers and make it make sense. The additional public safety of a 0.2% increase would generate a total of $784,640. Okay, there we go. And that's just the increase that... Uh, Correct. Yes. So, that, that would be this one right here in the blue. Oh, no, that's fine. Thank you. There we go. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. Fired. I gave up my IT hat 10 years ago. Okay. Um, okay, the... So here in the blue, thanks, this John. is the increase. What? <laughs> thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, the additional public safety at 0.2%. This is the total additional revenue, so 784,640. 
and then Fulton County would receive themselves proper 491-342. Um, Rochester would receive 246-926. Akron 22-127. Kiwana 19,694 and Fulton 4551. So with that, um, over here to the far right, I just did totals for everything with a 0.2% increase. So total Fulton County, and this includes the current public safety that we currently <coughs> have, is 2,379,625. Uh, Rock, and this is. <coughs> I guess I should go back here at the beginning. I broke this down in years of the bond. So I was mimicking everything after the bond. So this is a <coughs> year bond. Actually, I believe this breaks out to 18 years. Um, but so each year, so that's what the, the line is over there to the left. Come on. So come on over this way. So for each year, Akron, Rochester, Fulton, Kiwana, none of us get an increase the first two years because there's no, um, without doing the public safety increase. Or, uh, yes, if we don't do it until 2021, if we were to increase our public safety 2021. Uh, so our stay stagnant, you get to 2000, 2021, and suddenly now, and you look at Fulton County, they get, 2,870,967. Rochester would get 555,616, uh, 49,742, 44,299, and 10,256. Now, with just the two taxes that the county imposed last week or adopted last week, with the numbers being stagnant, they are already going to generate 1,000,000. $765,440 with just those two taxes. Okay. Um, and you come down here to the illustrative, and I say illustrative again, this is all the illustrative. Nothing has been adopted, nothing has been passed. Uh, but Umball had presented them with a bond payment on a $24 million bond of roughly 1.8. 7, 7 for the first year and it fluctuates just like uh, if you have a mortgage at home or you have a credit card payment it'll go up and down based on your interest well municipal bonds kind of work that way as well municipal bonds your interest rate will fluctuate a little bit based on your bond market at the time of entering into the bond so they have illustratively said 1.877 1.882 1.879 so this column right here is just what the illustrated bond payment is uh, if you look at the illustrative total bond revenue, uh, the first two years, Fulton County would receive 2.3 million without a bond payment. Now they do have, you know, they'll have some expenses with this particular project up front. Obviously they're gonna have some design expenses for the design of the jail. They're gonna have some professional service fees, things like that. Then starting in 2021, the impact would be at that point the bond starts and so if they receive two million three hundred seventy nine thousand six hundred twenty five dollars it leaves them and they pay the one million eight hundred seventy seven they still have five hundred and two thousand six hundred twenty five dollars left over um and i know that uh my understanding is their public safety they currently receive i'm sure they already have that allocated uh, currently to be spent with their public safety because that can only be used for their sheriff, their 911, uh, and EMS. Right, Tom? Correct. Correct? Mm -hmm. um, so that would uh, that would give them a, about $100,000 short of what they typically, right now, what they would get to make that bond payment. Um, so if you come down uh, on what they have, so what I did is then I took that and I said, okay, so if we go with a bond payment with the 0.2% public safety increase, what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is just for Fulton County, the difference would be if they increase the public safety, um, just them alone, not including Akron, Fulton, Rochester, Kiwana, they would have a difference of 993,967 after the bond payment. Um, and then I did it again. I did the same thing for the 0.3% um, and showed that they would have a, a revenue, a, a, an, a, 
additional revenue of 1.2 million after the bond payment. So again, it's just taking their information that they provided to us and just breaking it out in kind of a um, year by year snapshot um, and including our revenues because uh, the you know city was tasked with we would like to um, you, we would like you to contribute now with the two taxes that they've already implemented I, I cannot preface enough that everybody who lives and works in Fulton County pays this including those who live in the city and in the towns um, the public safety does get disseminated out uh, so that the city and the towns all benefit from that public safety tax um, but we do not benefit from the other two um, and then I just put my dis <laughs> my little disclaimer on there that the illustrative data was obtained from the June 21st 18 financial illustration mm -hmm. uh, revenue amounts were listed on the 2018 DLGF LIT report certified report uh, the LIT rates do not include the certified shares economic development property tax relief uh, which we total 1.68% of your income tax right now. Um, and it is not stationary from year to year. It can increase and decrease depending on several factors, uh, but it is based solely on income tax. Um, now, you know, what the county decides to do with their plan is, is them. Um, and then... You, Charlie, excuse me. If you, work yes. outside, if you work outside of Fulton County, I'm sure somebody's thinking this. If you work outside of Fulton County, are you exempt? No, you still you pay Fulton County income tax. Okay. Yep. You're not exempt today. We have heard that there's legislation afoot that, that could change to. that. Okay. That that's, could be a factor in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't know that we that will be the hey, case. Then I don't have to do that. <laughs> the, 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 the thing <laughs> the cutting yeah. cutting to the chase and, and rolling the figures uh, do do we come up short on a $1.8 million a year payment for a new $24 million facility with the two taxes that have already been implemented? Yes, but about $100,000 short, not $900,000 short. Uh, we're just not certain in looking at this that that public safety low it tax that we currently have needs to be raised. Would we would we like to say yes? We'll we'll take our shares and run. That would be great. We've got lots of things we could use it for, uh, but I'm not convinced it needs to be raised at this point. I, I'm also not convinced, and Councilman Smith, I think you've had some conversations with folks too. I'm not sure that we're looking at a 24 million dollar investment. Is that some of the feeling you're getting? Yes, I. Um I was told, I think it aired on the radio, that they've actually already considered cutting it down to something like 170, 375 beds, um, which obviously would cut some <coughs> of that uh, total. And um, yes, I, I don't think they have the scope decided in any stretch of, of the imagination I don't even know that the County Council has seen all the numbers I'm not sure um, but certainly they have not voted on anything have not decided anything have not determined even the location of the jail um, I know they're still giving some conversation and, and uh, we have provided other data for the plan that we were talking about, but um, they're still yet to determine where that location is going to be. So I didn't get the, I, I talked to several county council people, not really talked to commissioners, but I, uh, I get the sense that they haven't come close to having the scope identified for what <coughs> they're going to be doing yet. So, uh, I, I, I concur. I've had a couple of conversations with council folks too, and they're still trying to gather information to, wouldn't you say that's an accurate statement, to, to come to a, a, a plan? 
yes, I definitely. Um, and and I, in one of the conversations I heard, they even are talking about reconfiguring some of that office space in, uh, in regards to uh, classrooms. I think they'd like to see. And I know you don't have the benefit of seeing this, but I, I think they kind of think they want to see more classroom space in here as opposed to over there. Um, which I don't think that changes cost numbers too much, I wouldn't think. But well, the, the design is still undetermined. The Decatur folks, this layout, they build a complex. They've got several office folks in this facility also. Uh, I'm not sure we, we know what uh, will be housed in this in this type of facility. Right. Uh, to be determined. Uh, and Ted, I'll sit down. I'll, you want me to go over the taxpayer impact, and then you guys can thank you. Can you do the video real quick? It's <laughs> only a minute. <laughs> that is Dennis still here? <laughs> Dennis would have to look at my speakers and figure out why they're not working because oh, okay. they're plugged in. All right. So, okay. Um, I, I'm going to finish That's fine. my That's spreadsheet fine. and then let you guys finish your discussion um, and then you can go into the, the engineering <clears throat> for the property. Okay. Yep. Um, I, I also took the numbers and did a taxpayer impact because obviously our job is to be fiduciary responsible to the taxpayer. Um, with if you and I broke it down into and, and again this is illustrative data from uh, the county's information the I did 15,000 25,000 so I did 10,000 dollar increments from 15,000 up to 105 right now currently we have a tax income tax rate of 1.93 percent um, so if you are a person who earns fifteen thousand dollars a year you pay two hundred eighty nine dollars and fifty cents a year for your income taxes uh, if you're a $55,000 earner you pay a thousand sixty one fifty if you're uh, blessed enough to be a hundred and five thousand dollar earner you pay two hundred and twenty six two thousand twenty six dollars and fifty cents so you can see clearly that obviously the higher your income the more you're gonna pay again I focused only on the point two and the point three percent increase that the county has discussed with us and um, if they implement the public safety uh, what I did I had this done before last week so what I did is the what's in blue is what they enacted last week and what is in red is what we are discussing tonight as far as what would impact the city and the towns so if they were to implement at 0.2 percent the public safety additional uh, you would be paying a total of 2.58 percent so for an income earner at fifteen thousand you're paying three hundred eighty seven dollars a year if you are an income earner at fifty five thousand you're going to be paying one thousand four hundred nineteen dollars so you're going to be paying uh, not quite four hundred dollars more a year um, if you're a hundred five thousand dollar earner you're going to be paying two thousand seven hundred nine dollars uh, now obviously you could just deduct what's in red subtract that off so if I'm making fifty five thousand I would take I would actually if they we do not do the 0.2 percent increase then I would take hundred ten dollars off of that so I would be sitting at uh, one thousand three hundred nine dollars a year that I would be paying um, if and then you jump down in the next section um, you may not be able to see it back there very well because it's slowing up on the screen the 0.3 percent increase takes you up to a total of a 2.68 percent um, income tax so for the for if I'm a fifteen thousand dollar income earner, I'm paying four hundred and two dollars a year. If I'm fifty five thousand dollar earner, I'm paying one thousand four seventy four. If I'm one hundred and five thousand, I'm paying two thousand eight fourteen. And again, you can if we can subtract out the red. Um, if nothing is increased in the public safety sector or area, then I would be at uh, three hundred and sixty two dollars. I would be at at fifty five thousand. I'd be one sixty five less. Man, it's making me do, use my brain for this. Um, so I would be looking at thirteen. Oh, uh, what? A little over thirteen hundred. 
Um, and then 315 out of the 218, so I'd be looking at 2699. Um, so there's kind of the, the impact to the taxpayer. And again, that was one of those things that. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, this is a dumb question. But is this addition to what we're already paying? Yes, the, the top the top one is what we currently pay. These down here, uh, the one in blue, that was just passed last week. So that will be on, coming out of your paychecks next year. No, when you the say one that will be paid, the 200, um, say for example, the 105, the 210. Uh -huh. So not the 2,700 all plus what we have to pay. Right, right. If we, you can deduct that 210 off of that 2,709 because the red has not been passed yet. So we will not be paying that increase yet. Okay. I just, I had put this together before last week and I, it was one of those I debated on taking it out, putting it in, and I was trying to keep this simple. So what, what is in red is the public safety increase that has not been passed. So the public safety increase is, has not been passed, it is not implemented yet. Um, so that would be $210 that you would not be paying if you're a $105,000 income earner. Yeah, this, this sheet represents all of the local income taxes that not only do we currently have, but the two special ones that were just enacted that are that are now permanently added to this list. And then the, the uh, uh, public safety low at tax that we have on here that we have been paying on as Shada mentions in the in the red color is the increase if 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 we if the county votes on making an increase to that tax. So we, the blue has been added. Yes. And now we're going to add the red. Well, it's being contemplated by the county to increase that and add again. to the jail to the jail. Fund. Increase again. Yes. Yes. To make that now, we would keep our current distribution, the blue, but the new increase, no, well, I'm no, no, sorry, no, no. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, black. the black up here is to keep the current money, but the increase to it, the, the county's asking that we hand over to them for the jail. Mm -hmm. Because the state requires when you implement a low tax that the municipalities and the county get portions of it based on population. So we each get a distribution, and the county's mm -hmm. saying, please waive that, give it to us so that we can put it in the jail fund. Is that clear as mud? <laughs> okay. I, I, would, I would recommend anyone who is interested in looking how it affects individuals, grab this sheet. Shot has done a great job of laying it all out. Or any, I can email it too. Any questions? Folks for shot on on our spreadsheets. Okay, the, the other the other thing that uh, transpired at that meeting a few weeks ago, uh, those of you who were there as we were wrapping it up and the discussion of the location for the new jail came up, we made the uh, uh, offer, and again it was just an offer pending council approval, and you have not made an approval of this, but there was an offer of the. Uh, Remember that your sticker? What, what did my sticker say? Idea. Idea? Offer? Idea? Okay. <laughs> we have an offer. Idea. 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 That's correct. It was an idea. It was Sorry. An idea. <laughs> Sorry. I left that hat at home. It was an idea. It was uh, suggested <laughs> that uh, that 22 acres out next to the waste treatment plant that uh, the border mount that in front of fronting Monticello Road and you can see the 31 bypass from it could possibly be utilized to build this this facility uh, if you remember the Decatur the, uh, facility is built on 14 acres uh, I was asked by Councilman Lewis to uh, sh uh, show him that acreage the very next day after that meeting Commissioner. Commissioner Lewis, what I say, Councilman? <laughs> Commissioner Lewis, pardon me. And uh, he and Billy Morris met me out there. Billy is on the uh, the jail site selection committee, along with Commissioner Lewis and Sheriff Sailors. 
and I showed them the uh, 22 acres which we have soybeans growing on right now and okay they were going to evaluate it fine we looked at the fact that the utilities are right there and all in all you know it, we made a nice offer to them for a buck something of that nature they they'd save about four million dollars right off the top with the utilities and everything being right there uh, they were going to evaluate it and let us know. I have not received anything official back from that evaluation. I did hear some things uh, on the radio about some negatives to it, but we had also gone ahead uh, right after uh, suggesting the idea, council, the idea. We went ahead and got a hold of uh, Lawson Fisher and Associates who are the folks, the engineering folks, who did all the evaluation and processing of the dam redevelopment out there and we chose them because we've had no dealings with them the county's really had no dealings with them and they were very knowledgeable in our floodplain areas and everything of that nature here with the community they did a desk audit of our acreage out there and you've got a mm -hmm. report of their desk audit now let me re-emphasize it was a desk audit it cost us 1500 dollars a full-fledged audit's about five or six grand so we did a desk audit and they uh, concluded that uh, well, the wet plains area is not a problem uh, the, the creek that runs out there uh, uh, just north of that area it was not a problem uh, about 15 and a half acres of that 22 acres would be very satisfactory for a building it's sandy uh, property and such and uh, would take a uh, an average amount of fill. The other thing we heard was it was pretty low and it would take a lot of filter. That's not what this report says. So I give you a copy of this report for your consideration. And we also have fill to fill dirt to throw in. Oh yeah, if we need any fill, we've got uh, fields of fill dirt out there that were, was left over from the pilot project that we inherited. Um, so it's still looks like a viable spot to me but we have not had anything back any feedback from the county and hopefully we will get that i have not provided this to them i will get a copy to uh, commissioner lewis and to council president phil Owen. a lot of information thrown out tonight uh we still have a lot of uh, information i think to collect from the county um Councilman Smith, uh, you and I kicked it around a little bit as far as making our decision. Now, I know the county wanted it, or the Commissioner Lewis wanted us to have an answer by the 21st, but I'm not sure that's a factor anymore. Are you? I, I don't think it is. Um, I can, I certainly sympathize with the commissioners. They, and if the tables were turned and, and we received a non compliance letters, they've uh, that they have received on the jail. I understand their need to move forward, which I think they did a, a really good job with that first step of raising those uh, two taxes they did the other night. But uh, as far as the lit money is concerned, I personally just don't see uh, why we need to make that decision tonight. We we don't have uh, a scope of the job. We don't have uh, much detail at all. I mean, we know the model they want to do, uh, but we don't know size, we don't know scope, we don't know uh, location or anything else, nor does the council. They haven't decided on what they're doing. And until we have that information, I don't know uh, why we would need to decide now on uh, on lower funds uh, at this point in time I you know I agree I think a decision at this time with all of the uh, factors still to be answered uh, one important one being we may not be talking about 24 million dollars maybe something south of that I and think they've already gone south of that yeah. because of mentioning the fact that they're probably reducing beds down into the 170 range. Well, that's that's a considerable reduction. 
Uh, yeah, the decision, uh, it's up to you folks, but the decision to open up uh, our Lowit uh, increases that we'd receive if they increased the tax, I think it's, it's arbitrary right now uh, until that figure is, they may not need that tax. They may have all the money they need right now with what they've already captured. It's certainly close. Uh, I would have to concur <coughs> with you. What, I, you know, the rest of the council, any thoughts? When would they have to implement that, I guess, then to receive it? For the public For, safety increase? Yeah. Honestly, they because you capture it the year ahead of mm -hmm. disbursement, uh, if the bond doesn't start repayment until 2021, they 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 based on the numbers they should they could wait to implement it um either next year or 2020 um because the first bond payment isn't due um i believe it wasn't due until june or july of 2021 um and because they're going to capture roughly five million dollars these first two years I would think they would have enough that they would be able to make that first bond payment the first year. So yeah. even if they didn't implement it until 2020 <coughs> and become effective 2021 or 2022, um, based on just numbers alone, not based on what other, other extenuating or, or circumstances surround their decision, <coughs> um, you know, they would have enough to make that first bond payment, first two yeah. bond payments. Yeah, the other piece we haven't uh, said anything about, and Andy and Ryan might be able to shed more light on this. There is going to be a change in the judicial system in Fulton County uh, come January 1, and there is talk about the use of the jail maybe changing. I, I certainly don't know any detail about that, but uh, an impact there's been, the numbers. There's yeah. been conversation about maybe some alternatives to jailing everybody so our need might go down well it's certainly true that once we implement this you don't get it back <laughs> i mean it, it's there uh, yeah. right and you're locking it up for 20 years well, yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing too ted to, to make sure the public understands as well is the correctional rate and correct me if i'm wrong council uh, does by state law actually expires after 20 years so by that default that particular tax will drop off um, the tax roll off of income taxes after 20 years but not our public safety law no, wouldn't, uh, no. wouldn't drop just off. the correctional but that's why the, that's why the county council needed to act correct that yes. is the way they did and get correct. that uh, because they, had, yeah, they they were given a time limit by the state legislatures right. to say you need to implement this so they were kind of caught with that with those two taxes mm -hmm. correct so they needed to do that right and again in those you know they capture all 100 percent of the revenue and they keep 100 percent of it so there's no um we don't have to muddy the waters on those right just for that purpose of the jail correct mm -hmm. um, mayor if you need a motion I, I would um, and Andy you tell me if I want tabled or postponed or, uh, <laughs> or does it, if we're going to not do anything does it die for a lack of a motion you, you, um, never, you never need to make a negative motion okay so, I mean, if, if your intent is not to make any changes at this time you don't need to make any we don't need to no one needs to make any motion the way I see it, and, yeah. and, and just if, if you're bringing it up at a future meeting, make sure you make a request that you get on the agenda. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to see us not take action on uh, raising the lower tax at this time. Well, uh, we wouldn't be raising it, we wouldn't you know, giving our portion to anything, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's not in our power to raise it, right? right? I feel the same way, Marty does. Yeah, I agree as well. It's a general consensus. It's mm -hmm. water. Okay, so be it. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Ted, did you want to open the floor up for any other questions? Yeah, we can do that. While we're Thank still you. on the subject, I we have a lot of people here gathered, and I assume they've gathered for this subject. Anybody who would like to share their thoughts from the uh, council's 
for future consideration on the subject. Anyone? Oh, Big Leo? I would just like to mention, and, and I'm speaking... Would you, would you identify yourself for the record, please? I'm identify fine. yourself for the record, please. Rick Figlio. I, I, I'm speaking as Rick Figlio, not as a member of city government, not under anyone's influence, but I've talked to a lot of people on this subject. There are a lot of questions out there. How do we know what tax rate we need when we don't know what we're going to build? Why are we in such a hurry to do this? Why don't we wait till after the election? Those kind of questions need to be answered before you people have can possibly make that decision as to what to do on this tax rate. Okay. And yeah. for some reason, we don't seem to be getting those answers. Mm -hmm. uh, the general consensus is we're going after as much as we can get. We'll figure out what to do with it after we get it. <coughs> I don't think you want to be any part of that. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Um, moving right along. New business. Jim Ewan, Lake Manitou Association, suggested improvement for the ditch between Lakeshore Drive and Ewing Road from fish hatchery beds. There he is. I was trying to pick you out in the audience. I couldn't find you. Jim Bob, you're right in the back corner. Back yeah. here. I'm Jim Ewan. I'm with the Lake Manitou Association Secretary this year. About seven uh, weeks ago, I called Mayor Ted and asked, what's the possibility of filling in the race, um, the ditch, open ditch, between Ewing Road and Lakeshore Drive? Um, there are several problems with the race. When I was a cop here, I worked two rollovers into the ditch and uh, one on the other side. We can't do anything about that because it goes down into Mill Creek, but we can certainly do something about the, uh, the open ditch side. Um, it's an expense to the city. You got to go mow up the hill, back up, go up, down, up, down, all the way through it. I wouldn't want to be the guy running the mower. And not only that, it's not very pretty. And I asked Mayor Ted, what would be the possibility of filling it in? Uh, he said he would love to, however, DNR uh, pretty much told him couldn't be done. I asked him, could I talk with DNR and uh, uh, see what their problem is? Um, I talked to several DNR offices down in Indy, finally got the, the one that has a say-so over it. It's, uh, a lady named Marquita Stefferson, uh, the head of the Technical Services Division, told her what I was going to ask about. And uh, she said, uh, wait a minute, first of all, we have no jurisdiction over that. That's owned by the city. And uh, she said, if you want help uh, with your locals, let me know. I said, what do you mean, who are our locals? And they, she said, you people, the uh, city owns that. Uh, she said, there's a website that she uh, gave me, and uh, she can also help to assist in whatever needs to be done. I took a look, uh, she sent that website to me, and I took a look at that, and I saw in it down in the bottom corner that it showed that what Gary Madeline was the uh, floodplain coordinator uh, and the that ditch is in the floodplain uh, gave Gary a call he said uh, I don't care what you do with it he said you can fill it in but I would ask one thing that you not make it crowned so the water runs off onto both streets make it level or slightly indented and he said that'll fit in real well with his floodplain uh, plan. And he said, however, call uh, Casey Coles and get her blessing. Um, call Casey and she said, I have absolutely no problem with it. It's a safety issue that could be addressed easily. And um, said, no, one thing is to keep Don Town in the picture. So I called Don Town. Um, He's 100% behind it. He said, as a matter of fact, um, I've got uh, uh, women who are wanting me to uh, clear out the thicket on the uh, north side of um, 
Ewing Road. Um, I think the Garden Club or somebody built a little uh, area in there, picnic area or butterfly garden or something. And um, he didn't say it was them, but he uh, said, I guess I'm going to have to take bushes out and shrubs out. And he said, do you want those trees taken out that are in the race? And I uh, said, no, we're not interested in removal of trees. Just uh, could we open it up to our uh, local contractors to put clean fill in there, start at one end and work our way to the other. It's not going to be a one-year project. It might be a several-year project. Uh, but specify that has to be good clean fill going in there and then ultimately we'd have uh, a park uh, place for picnic tables flowers all sorts of things that it's one of the gateways to the lake uh, kind of a gateway to Rochester and uh, we'd like to beautify that uh, that's kind of the goals of the Lake Association first of course is clean up the lake and second is to beautify the surrounding areas so I guess I'm asking uh, for your support. Can this be done? And I, I, this is just throwing it against the wall and see what sticks. Um, there are a lot of things that have to be answered, posting, um, policing to make sure nobody dumped uh, lumber in it or uh, stumps or what have you. Uh, has to be good, clean fill. The lady at DNR said, um, rock stones dirt uh, bricks you know the hard stuff uh, she said uh, I said what what's the problem with asphalt and she said well it come out of the earth didn't it uh, meaning the so the oil to make asphalt um, I think we would have to get a clarification on that but uh, everybody seems to be in favor of it and at this point I'm asking what's your opinion and where do we go from here if we can? So. Uh, my response to you on that, my resource was uh, Mr. David Smith with the DNR who was in charge of the uh, dam and spillway projects. Mm -hmm. uh, that is his belly way. I would like to get uh, Marquita and David together and get them on the same page because mm -hmm. he said that is an active, those are spillways that are part of the dam protection flood process and that we could not do anything with them other than maintain them and he told us how to do that we could mow them and such mm -hmm. but i think we need to get the two dnr heads together uh this is kind of like getting your taxes audited and one auditor tells you one thing and another one tells you something else but like i say this guy lives that world uh we probably, I, if you could give me her name and contact number, mm -hmm. I would try to get those two together and mm -hmm. see what uh, what the common denominator comes out to be, Jim. Because uh, when we fill it all in and do all of this stuff, uh, they don't come to the Lake Manitou Association. They come to the mayor's office. So I want to make sure we're not mm -hmm. broaching something there. He came and was very explicit at our park board meeting. Yeah, he was. And I can actually, I'll give you a copy of this. This was um, the DNR's, basically what he presented to our park board because they wanted to do some things in that dam spillway area where the beach and that is. Mm -hmm. And they frowned upon some of that. And it's simply because uh, that dam will always be a high hazard dam. Uh, they will never get, a, we will never be able to get away from that designation simply because of the trajectory of if there's ever a catastrophic event, failure, um, things like that where that dam fails in some capacity. Um, the trajectory of the flooding and the impact to life and damage to property is significant. Uh, so they are, the, the folks that actually maintain that area with the dam may have yeah. a different perspective than the other folks mm -hmm. at the DNR uh, because they're not looking at it in the same manner. Um, but I know when he came, he, they if it if the dam floods, essentially if those front spillway where the creek comes through floods and it runs over Ewing Road, there's the possibility that that additional ditch right there would catch any overflow before it would actually flood any of those homes. So okay. I think Ted's right. I think we would want to make sure we get those two uh, involved <coughs> and have a conversation to make sure that everybody is in agreement or not and before we would ever commit to something like that, that. Yes. because uh, you know the last thing we want is for there to be a failure 
and then we end up with flooded houses <laughs> that she, could have been prevented. She um, talked about that possibility, but she said that is not a possibility because of the difference in elevation should the dam fail, it would be a problem, you know, we heard it years ago, it's going to wipe out the hospital and do this and do that. And yeah. you, you You'll take see a, by the take a look it's very at clear this. on the yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I There'd don't be some to... lakefront property at the hospital yeah. if, yeah. if yeah. the dam yeah. broke. But I, I don't no. want to, um, to be disparaging to her knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, but the flood maps are very evident that okay. she would yeah. not be accurate yeah. in that statement. Oh, again, I would have no problem sitting down. We got the two of these folks together. Uh, mm -hmm. But it seems like there's there's some opposing views within the DNR apparently. What would be your attitude toward it if uh, she convinces him that there was no safety uh, factor? A letter from Mr. Smith clarifying the situation, because he was the one who was pretty adamant about it. Okay. Yeah, I I would say we would have to have some documentation for sure, especially mm -hmm. because of that dam. That that's our biggest challenge is the dam and the the other area on the side yeah. on the north side they're viewing uh, there's very little that we can do there uh, you know we cannot remove those trees we can't touch any of that stuff because the minute you do um, and floodplain change then that changes um, the flooding if there is ever an event in that case I think downtown's planning on doing that so um, already oh boy uh, you better tread lightly. You better talk to these people there with the dam. Yeah, because we can't even um, put a footbridge in. We uh, our park board yeah, wanted to they put wouldn't a even let us put a foot that creek in. in the DNR frowned upon that unless it was so far down the creek. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we're not to remove any of those trees mm -hmm. or do anything. Okay, I'll Chief, make sure. Chief Butler, you've got some information on that too. With the uh, don't you have some information too with the. Uh, the, uh, Just when I was there talking to him, the Army Corps of Engineers and his, this last group was there and said, you know, really, the 100-year flood plan and all that was incorporated. It's the information I received from that gentleman, so. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and with Shada, with, with the footbridge, I, I heard we couldn't do anything. They didn't want anyone on the bridge or supposed to be signed, or on the dam, there's signs posted to stay off. So. Yeah, and those floodplain areas were sacred mm -hmm. but, but if she would get with that if mr smith and mr smith sends us a letter as such mm -hmm. then we've got something on the record is he in this he's the one who put that i, in I just flipped through there i thought his information was in there but it's not i can get can it you to get him. that okay um, uh, i thought he had put yep. it on there but he did not okay um gary madeline being the floodplain coordinator uh, said it certainly was not a problem so uh, and, you know DNR trumps that it could be <laughs> oh I can tell you <laughs> and like I said and you'll see the maps they're in there as far as the trajectory of if it floods um, it's, it's, it's in red <laughs> yeah, it, it was on her website here too but yeah. she said it makes no difference so that's what I'm going by yeah okay we'll work on it thanks all right no problem thank you mm -hmm. Okay, uh, ordinances and resolutions, we have none. Uh, department reports, Chief Butler, you're up. Good evening, I'm going to copy and report for July. Good evening, Tom. Structure fires City 1, 2 in Rochester Township, vehicle fires 3 in Rochester Township, mutual aids 2 in Liberty, one in Union Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city. Rescue, one in Mentone. Uh, accidents, four in the city, one in Newcastle, three in Rochester, two in uh, Richland. Medical assists, 15 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township, one in Newcastle Township. We drove the ambulance back to the facility four times. CO check, one in the city. Service calls, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Cancel calls, one in the city. One Rochester Township, one Union Township, one Abenabi Township. Uh, for a total of 53 calls and one drill. Also update on the two new hires we had presented through the Board of Works. Both of their packets are down at per pending approval for acceptance into program. The next step then is they will come in in process with Carolyn and then get a start date. <clears throat> pending your questions, that concludes my report. Anything uh, for Tom? 
Thank you. Have Thank a good you, evening. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief Schatz. <laughs> Uh, for the month of July, we had a total of 12 accidents. Two of those were personal injury. We issued 74 total warnings. Three of those were for city ordinances. There were a total of 109 offenses. 41 of those were traffic, 65 criminal, and three juvenile. There were a total of 68 case reports, 785 calls for service, 30, 33 lockouts, 15 towed vehicles, and 33 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for. Okay. Any uh, any questions for Chief Shots? The uh, methamphetamine that is that still that uh, it's not a manufacturing problem. It's no, it's just the possession problem. True possession yeah. problem. Yep. We're not seeing the meth labs. We're seeing plenty of meth though. That, that doesn't seem to be going away. Anything else for Chief? Thanks, Andy. Thanks. <laughs> Andy Williams, uh, Stormwater Projects. Um, 4th Street, uh, they <laughs> Uh, implemented a dewatering. They put in a dewatering system on the street to uh, try and get the groundwater lowered. And uh, so while it's running, they moved over to the west side of Ohio Street, just north of Fifth. And because the storm sewer splits there, so they're going to start laying that leg. They started that this morning. Uh, the LED lighting, Duke and started installing it on the 14th of August, and it should be done within the next couple weeks. That's the citywide LEDs. 7th Street and Madison parking lot, uh, we got Donahue Engineering is working on a French drain layout so that we can present it to the drainage board so we can finish that project. Then the generator. Uh, core Mechanical was in today and they're working on connecting the gas meter to it and changing out the uh, regulators in the building. The next thing we're going to do, they'll do is uh, run down a pre-start checklist and then we're going to load test it. And, and, and if I may the rooms interject there, there's been a lot of upgrade and along with this to our electrical setup back here in the back. And haven't you noticed how quiet it is? It the is infamous quiet. hum is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and we did that just for RTC because we know it drove you folks nuts with your equipment and such. But it's gone. We've gotten that all upgraded now. That's all I got. Okay. Any questions for Randy? Uh, how's Mr. PV doing? Have you heard anything? No, I've heard okay. Anything. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, the uh, I mentioned the LED lights, as, as Randy mentioned, uh, they're about half completed throughout the community. And I don't know if any of you have seen them, but boy, do they make a difference. They're really nice. We do. We met. Um, Harry was part of that meeting. We met uh, this afternoon with uh, uh, the young uh, engineer from Duke, Sam. Switzer, Switzer, never get that last name correct. Anyway, we are looking at about 18 uh, lights for downtown that are of a decorative style that will replace all the steel pole lights down down on Main Street. So those will be very nice. Also, again, LEDs. Um, okay, Lenny, Street Department. And if you would, to uh, Mason, since Mason's not here, kind of give us a rundown on the park board meter. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, downtown had contacted me about some areas that were uh, conflicting with the bus drivers, so we uh, trimmed back the following areas. Um, West 12th Street and Fulton Avenue, west of the stop sign. 
um, 18th and Bancroft, northwest side, um, Road Street, the west side of it, the alley in between 9th and 10th and Pontiac, uh, the east-west alley was grown over, so we uh, cut that back as well. Um, we've been uh, chipping brush, um, mowing our right-of-ways. Um, we fixed holes that developed at 6th and Madison. Um, it was just a clay tile that cracked and uh, developed a sunk sinkhole in the road. Um, third and fourth and clay, they had bored uh, through our uh, storm drain line that runs down the middle of third and fourth and clay. Um, we uh, patched that up with a couple of Burncos and some PVC pipe. Um, Eighth and Franklin, uh, we dug it up and developed a uh, scene that it was a uh, telephone pole that had been uh, decayed and broke off and buried. Um, 13th and uh, 15th and Pontiac um, by the manhole on the east side, it was a uh, line that they stubbed out, clay tile, and they tried to plug it up and uh, didn't get the job done and it developed a sinkhole in the ground so uh, we got that patched up and fixed. Um, had a tree come down Saturday the 11th at 417 West 7th Street. Um, we came in and uh, removed it and put it in the vacant lot until uh, Monday and then we uh, addressed it and got it hauled away. Um, that was a tree that was been marked to take down by the uh, tree board and uh, it has been since uh, taken down. Um, another one was at uh, <coughs> 10th and Park Street. Um, that was 3.30 in the morning Monday. Not a very good way to start the week out, but that, uh, it was a proper a property. It was not in our right of way, but it was, fell across upon the, uh, Park Street. So uh, we came with our loader and uh, moved it around and took care of it uh, that, that day. <clears throat> We've been sweeping the streets, picking up bags of yard debris, patching holes. Uh, been working on missing and faded street signs. Yeah, do you have any idea how many street signs we've replaced? Because I've, I've noticed it's a bunch. About $900 worth. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say probably about a good 30 to 40 signs okay. or more. Okay. Um, we graded and stoned an alley between Bancroft and College, 13th and 14th, North South Alley, and we put millings in the alleys. Um, since Mason ain't here, I'll touch on some of his stuff uh, for the park. Uh, we've been mowing the grass, uh, cleaning the restrooms daily, and uh, remo removed the balance apparatus as it was rotted at the bottom and the top. Uh, the street department teamed up with the park and hauled dirt to the driving range. Got rid of uh, some tires on tire cleanup day behind the maintenance shed. Serviced a new tractor, power washed the basketball court at Fansler Park. Painted the door and the exterior of the bathroom at the Fansler Park. And um, I got quotes on uh, trimming up the city park from a couple of our contractors. Okay. Uh, any uh, word from me and B as to when the uh ADA portion of our disc golf course no, will be I, I haven't heard anything from okay. them yet. Okay. They probably have that the last part of their list. Probably. <laughs> That's yeah. probably going to be one of the last things, it's yes, sir. Busy right now. Along with that, I had a request, Lenny, that I forget to mention to you every once in a while. The uh, picnic tables out at the, the beach. Can we take one table? Just one table is all I was asked and make it uh, wheelchair accessible, like on the end of it, make sure that a wheelchair could get up. We can. Yep. Appreciate that. And so would the gentleman who asked me about we'll it. We'll put it uh, put it nearest to the sidewalk and yeah. that way it could just wheel right up to it. He, he lives right there in the uh, trailer court. He likes to go down there and sit at tables and watch watch stuff. So. Yep, I'll get on that for Thank sure. Thank you. Thank you. That'd yeah. be appreciated. Anything else, Lenny? That's, that's all I got. Any questions for Lenny? I do have that question, but with that, the trees that you said you trimmed, can you, you can get that list to me? I can make sure we get the tree board 
just in case there's some overlap with the ones that were we contracted. Okay, out. sure. That, that 1417 West 7, so you said that. Yeah, that's good. on the list, but. That tree's gone. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we need to make sure that the contractor doesn't charge us for it. Because that's, that's been. No, they, they took it down. We didn't, the whole tree didn't fall, it was just a limb. And then they took it down. And then they took the tree down. I, I, Ryan, I okay. think Jim was on that. Okay. And I, I think okay. he was involved. But the, you should have Lenny's report that has the list there at the top. Okay. Um, that way, then you can confirm that. But I think. But I know that same contractor that's that trying to bill us for that tree is trying to bill us for the one on between 7th and 8th, and then it ain't been taken down yet. So, might want to get with them. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? on the. Uh, first Thursday, so if you're available. I'll get you a list. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Louie. You can always run back and forth, because a lot of times we get a board meeting. What happened just there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lenny. Uh, Marcus? Yeah. You were halfway down the aisle before I called your name. Usually, usually you skip me. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. You'd be guessing. In our lab, uh, we had normal plant testing. Uh, we just submitted our EPA, QA, QC testing results. That's our testing we do every year in our lab to make sure our tests are certified and our lab techs are certified that way we can get in compliance. We just finished our uh, Lau quarterly testing and also at that same time we did our annual metal testing on Lau for the year. Uh, we just finished up our annual wet testing, which is our toxicity test. Uh, Basically, they take our samples and they put it in with uh, tadpoles and uh, water fleas to make sure they survive. So that was the test last year that we failed and had to redo. So we're hoping for good results here. <clears throat> you know the big goldfish that Warren used to have in the tank down there? Correct. Noticed that in your office the other day. Those are gone. Did we have a fish fry or what? <laughs> You can say that. <laughs> they we, were huge. We, uh, we, they're still there. There's about eight. Uh, we've been trying to give some away because they're starting to get too big. Where are they? They're in my office. Really? Yeah. Didn't, didn't see them. In a 50-gallon tank. Okay. They're getting they big. They're hiding, Ted. And <laughs> we use the biggest goldfish I have ever they, seen. <laughs> well, are they actual? That's what my question. Are they actual goldfish or, or are they a koi? Uh, they're kind of a breed of a thing. <laughs> really. uh, you need to have an open house and show yes. the kids what happens when you throw your goldfish in the sewer. <laughs> and we actually put our effluent. Don't do that. We, yeah. our, <laughs> we actually put our effluent water in there, so it's kind of a test for us in house to see if our fish survive and everything. So. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. <laughs> the, the, the ones you have, the ones you have in that tank, Our they originals. survive at Three Mile Island. Yep. Let me tell you, they, they are ugly looking the brutes. <laughs> okay. All right, and our plant, uh, CleanCo, they just submitted their last payment app. <clears throat> with that, uh, I went through with Commonwealth. Uh, it's 99.78% of the project is complete. Good. Um, Good. With that, we have a year warranty on everything they've done. And the stuff that's not complete is basically landscaping and things like that. Are they still wanting a walkthrough? Uh, Wayne will be back to do one more walkthrough okay. after his last chat. Yeah, let list. me know. I'd okay. like to go along with that. Um, with that, we've been doing our own housekeeping um, around the plant. We clean trucks, continue to paint inside the plant. Uh, we did some new safety signs. We replaced some of our lights with some LEDs. And then we're cleaning up the trees inside the gates. Um, along with that, it's been neglected kind of over the years. We've kept it clean, but our actual discharge area into Mill Creek, now there's like a walkway to go down to see our effluent coming into the Mill Creek. Uh, we'll be adding stone and maybe possibly a walkway out. Um, we will be ordering our first batch of aluminum sulfate. That's going to be the chemical we use to remove phosphorus in our water. Um, we have to be in compliance by August 1st of 2019, so we have some time to play this get into compliance. And Commonwealth is working with you on Yes. Yeah, good. In our collections, we just uh, normal locates. Uh, we're continuing our uh, routine maintenance and sewer and storm line uh, that I put in. The update on that, since we're doing both at the same time, my uh, project that's pretty going pretty slow because we're getting held up quite a bit. So is that the leachate? Project. No, this is just our cleaning. Okay. Where we started in the heights right now, and we're working our way towards all the, this stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Update on air, air vac C, which is the moose air vac station. 
Uh, we did get everything fixed there, so there's no leak inside the station. Um, another update with the Lucas Street lift station, which is in front of the scrapyard. I have a meeting September 4th with um, Robin O'Neill. Yep. Duke. Uh, yep, with Duke. Yep. To get that project back going forward. Um, and also, we have a lift station that's currently only running on one pump. It's the one that gets uh, fed from Country Meadows, and I'm getting quotes for that being fixed slash replaced. Other than that, that's all I have. Yeah, we're, we're real close to making a decision. There. Right. Right. Any questions for Marcus? I don't say it enough times, but uh, for all you guys, Lenny, Marcus, Derek, Andy, Tom, you guys doing a heck of a job. Uh, Randy, I think anybody who's paying attention can see you're very, very busy and uh, knocking stuff off right and left. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, thanks, Marcus. Appreciate it. Mr. Derrick. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> for the month of July, we did uh, the following duties. We read meters, orders, repair to replace bad meters, locate, spec, wash the filter beds, shut off, swept them off the plant, mowed multiple times, ran the weed eater around some fire hydrants that needed it, uh, weed eater around the plant, well houses and tower lots, <clears throat> hauled in more fill dirt for the new concrete pad at the lower shed. Um, that pad is complete now, and we are still hauling in some fill dirt around it. Um, cut out the blacktop and pothole the water mains at East 4th Street and Indian Avenue for the 4th Street storm sewer project. Uh, the sewer department did assist us on that with the vector. Assisted HRP and shut the main valves off and turned them back on at 16th and Monroe Street so they could make their connections for the new water main. Um, line located a service line at 15th and Monroe Street for HRP. Traced out the service line at 1228 Washington Street cut out the concrete and found the curb stop and raised it up and uh, made sure we could get on it and was able to shut it off if needed. They were doing some sewer work there and we couldn't find the shut off and what you know somebody poured concrete over it. <coughs> shut off the main valves at 14th and Monroe Street and Madison and Main Street as well so HRP can make the final connection of the old four inch water main on Monroe Street or the final disconnection sorry. Digs that were performed, we made two new one-inch taps at 810 Mitchell Drive. That was a new house and a pole barn. Repaired a water leak at 1223 Franklin Street. Made a new one-inch tap at 2989 Wabash Road for a new house. <coughs> and here comes the fun parts. Fixed a water leak at 6th Street and Ohio Street. The sewer department assisted with the vector. The fire department assisted us by loaning us two sections of two and a half inch fire hose for our trash pump and the street department assisted us by loaning us their big truck to haul the backfill in. Fixed another water leak at East 6th Street and Ohio Street. <coughs> HIS construction that they broke during the 4th Street storm sewer project. And then call outs. I was called out on the 19th at 10 p.m. to 982 West 8th Street for low water pressure. Um, I pulled the meter and there was great pressure there. The homeowner had uh, a huge filter in there. Um, and the situation pretty much became their issue. We had great water pressure at the meter. Um, Randy Carr was called out on the 26th at 4 p.m. to 618 Main Street for a leak inside. Uh, that would be Times Theater. Um, the water was shut off for the curb at the curb for repairs to be made by the owner. Um, Carr was called. Randy Carr was called out again on the 28th at 7:30 p.m. to 314 West Fifth Street for a water leak inside the residence. Water was shut off at the curb for the repairs to be made. That's all I got. Any, any questions for Gary? The, uh, the, the Monroe Street project, how, what, what's the status of that? How, it, yeah. how much completed? And the water main is 100% complete. All the service lines are hooked over. Everybody's on the new main. All the hydrants are live. Um, right now they're doing all the restoration work. So it, it's virtually completed. It's just mop up, if you will, some cement work, and then some so landscaping to be done. Went pretty well. Then. It yeah. went very quickly. It's, I, I was impressed as smooth as it went. Yeah. So uh, one of the smoothest uh, construction <coughs> projects we've had it just yeah. went very, very well. There was some little adjustments, but we had to get eyes on 
what we had at the intersections before we can make final decisions, but we made those changes as we went, and I feel that everything is hooked up the way um, it should be for the residents, let alone for us as the city. <clears throat> yeah, Derek did a, did a great job uh, watchdogging dogging yeah. that as it went, and uh, <clears throat> there were some things brought to light that saved us a lot of time and effort. They actually finished ahead of schedule, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anything else for Derek? You're not on vacation or anything in the next? And I wasn't going to say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, I was not going to say a word. I promise. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Derek. That's an inside joke, uh, folks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Karen, what happened at the Area Planning Commission? The meeting was canceled. I had no, <laughs> no information. <laughs> uh, I didn't make a tape of that. Uh, apologize. So, much, so much for Karen. You know, that's great. We talked about that earlier today, didn't we, Karen? <laughs> yes, we did. Goodman, that guy, are you skipping Harry? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll bring him in there somewhere. I'll bring him in somewhere. Goodman? That's Sorry, good. Harry. I don't know what you did to him. Well, he yeah. got himself pushed to the head of the line. Yeah, I know. Did you notice that? I had to You've been flagged. <laughs> Let's get going. You'll be on at 9 o'clock, Harry. <laughs> Goodman, Fedco. Fedco met August 2nd. Uh, reporting a check account balance of 10046 Operating reserve, 72582.52. Um, the new chamber director, Jillian Kramer, was introduced to the board, um, discussed. We still have some open board seats. Terry has been reaching out to candidates, and when we get some people to accept, accept, well, the, the board will vote. Um, to reference what you talked about a little bit earlier, the, the lit tax, uh, David Heidi and Terry spoke with Mike Karakoff about the proposed legislation. The lit tax and the way it's allocated. Currently, your that tax goes to the county you reside in. They want to change that to make it the county you work in, which is gonna be great for Kokomo, South Bend, Mishawaka. It's gonna kill the rural, rural counties. I know. That comes straight out. Uh, so, at that meeting, you know, we discussed as, as the Economic Development Board, we need to reach out to the legislators and uh, legislators and tell them this is not a good idea and I would encourage everyone here to do the same I mean because that that's just really gonna put a lot of the rural counties in a, in a bind if they do that it's come up several years before but this year it seems to be getting more traction so it's really something to be looking at the community readiness initiative so we decided as a board that the community readiness initiative is something we want to lead the community through we're signed up and set up in the system but the first step is rec recognize our geography, and we decided to do Fulton County, not just a town, it's the whole county. The second step is to put together a team of six to eight people with one person being the point of contact, and at that meeting we bannered about some names, working on getting that committee set up. Uh, the business incubator we've been talking about is still in the works. Uh, Chris Van Dyne's uh, waiting to see if the environmental's clear. They do. Um, help purchase the building and he's still looking for tenants to help with the debt service but that still is moving um, October 18th at Jerry's it'll be open to the public will be a Fedco pitch it's been sponsored by <coughs> some local businesses RMC Nipsco rapid view um, and possibly at this time Swiss Lauren Smith <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Do I have a second on that? Brian, <laughs> <laughs> what was that name? Is your report still going October, on? Give October me a yellow flag. <laughs> October 18th. <laughs> what was the date? October, October 18th. 18th. <laughs> you, you probably ought to be there, Marty, to see how much you owe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, on Ivy Tech, Terry spoke with, with Chan Chancellor McCurdy about their future in the county and was told we were on their timeline for community outreach, whatever that means. And uh, we've mentioned Frank Boley time and time again, and there's really, it's the same, you know, the property was closed on, he does own property, he's paying tax on it. Um, Terry and the mayor were planning a trip to go see him just to kind of see what his plans are for the property. That hasn't occurred yet. No, we, we went, we went. Yeah. We took, uh, 
the Jenny Lee, the old puddle jumper, and made it over there and uh, got his, his layout and his entrance and exit points uh, so that that can be included in the 4th Street project out there. Okay, there was a company out of North Carolina that inquired about the Eanes building. So Terry put them in contact with the group in Dallas and they responded, the building is not for sale. So uh, Terry referred them to a couple, another couple sites. Um, was that um, Schnabel Tier at the time was installing their brewing equipment the following week and they should have beer sometime in October. We also have a new building owner downtown. Uh, 505 Main Street was purchased by Dennis Williams. And who, who happens to be in the audience tonight. <laughs> Welcome, yes. Dennis. Our newest, newest entrepreneur. Congratulations. And Dr. Ken Hoff has opened up his apartments on 9th Street and currently has two renters. And unless Terry has anything to add or you have questions, that concludes my report. I believe he's up to three now. Four, I think. Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm see. I'm getting five. Can I have six? <laughs> is it five? Uh, out of he's asked, asked twelve to rent. Right. Yeah. Okay. The only other thing I would add is we did get another USDA grant for a revolving loan fund for small business, and that was a ninety-three thousand dollars award. Great. Would you just like to transfer right on to, to the redevelopment commission, sure. Gary? I don't Sorry, think I Eric transition right on into that. <laughs> yeah, I'll go back a little bit on on Fedco. We did get. I know um, your time's limited. You have to get out of here. I know it's late. <laughs> Golly, um, I want to get Harry up here as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did talk with the realtor that was looking at uh, an outlet by Walmart for Wings, etc. It looks like the um, offer on the property has been accepted. They're 120 days or so out from closing. Um, I heard today there was a purchase agreement signed. Yeah. Um, on that Fedco pitch, uh, that's an idea where uh, either existing or uh, startup businesses can come before we've got three judges lined up right now and be awarded up to $10,000 for their business expansion or development. Um, and um, I guess I said we talked about Taylor Chemicals and Frank, Frank Boley. Um, I did have a lead we worked this week uh, for a uh, actual a, State Senator who contacted us about a data center that they were looking at a location near 31, but we don't have the building inventory um, close enough to a substation to work that out, unfortunately. So it would have been a nice um, power user and then also a lot of equipment. Um, on the uh, Redevelopment Commission, we did uh, get our stormwater protection plan done, our final design done, our DNR approval done. Our U.S. Army Corps approval done, as long as we do a boardwalk through the wetlands for the Nickel Plug Trail project. Uh, we're still waiting for IDEM approval of the stormwater uh, protection plan. Uh, we did run the notification uh, ad for bids on Saturday in the Sentinel. So we're accepting bids until September 11th for that project. Uh, phase one will be all the clearing and getting base down. Hopefully that can be done yet this fall. And you have a new member. And we board. do have a new member. Um, Todd. Todd Beeler. Yeah. We, he'll be the first meeting he'll be in on will be the September 12th meeting, and that's okay. where we hope to open the bids for the nickel plate uh, trail project. Yeah, you might you might just touch base with him. I saw him at the football game. He was kind of wondering when his first meeting was going to be. Yeah, so. September 12th. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Terry? Thanks, Terry. Okay. Harry, come on up. <laughs> I don't see his name though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've heard that. Yeah, we've heard that. I have nothing to say. Uh, really, the only thing I do, there was a conference call between Pat Jacobs and Stephen Ray about the MSRP project, and they've got their, they've kind of agreed to their timeline, and uh, she's got the drawings of the preliminary drawings about completed. She anticipates meeting with the building owners next week, or, or calling them to schedule. She'll be in town for two days to go over costing of those projects. So that's proceeding, and then they're, she, they're also take those same drawings and turn it in for. Uh, there's a you know it has to go in front of historic preservation people, and they have to give it their blessing as well. So she's preparing that um, project. We anticipate there'll be a few that'll probably pull out, um, but still moving ahead with that. Uh, we did install Lance and I installed three of the benches downtown uh, that weren't in the path of the 
street lights. Uh, there are two of them located at American Legion and one at Flirt. So we want to see what the benches look like. There, there's two there, three there, and we'll probably be able to put a few more in. Hopefully before um, this fall, we're going to probably hold off on anything that's going to be near a street light since those may be coming out. Um, Harry, uh, first one they put in, he texted me a picture, and here's the guy, a guy sleeping on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got the homeless off the ground. That was, <laughs> kudos. We couldn't resist. That's <laughs> <laughs> so tempting. <laughs> Cotton picking sense of humor, let me tell you. <laughs> Anything else for Harry? Thanks, Harry. Right. And Harry, thanks for your efforts. All right, appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Mason and Ken's not here. Uh, BZA and Council on Aging, Councilman Smith. Yes, sir. The uh, BZA met last week. It was a very short meeting, two items on the agenda. Normally those meetings aren't uh, prior to our meeting, but um, uh, this month they, it was. They uh, had to sign variants for the Community Foundation on 9th Street. If you haven't seen that sign, it's pretty nice. And they had a um, front yard uh, a deck on the front of a house and the only unusual thing about that was it wasn't at the lake it was up on Ohio Street but both of those items passed. Council on Aging and uh, BZA uh, Transpo. Up at the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. I'm I'm not not sure. Sure. I don't know. You, you, you have the floor. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to you. <laughs> Uh, Transpo is still doing over 150 trips a day. They have received the uh, 14 passenger, the new van uh, that's been received and it's uh, been very well received and certainly a nice addition to the fleet. Um, the drivers are all undergoing their annual physicals and they've hired a new part-time driver. With RSVP, the uh, basic conversation was about the trips that they've had and are going to have, and uh, they had a, a, a day trip to the Indiana State Fair that was uh, very well attended and received. They have a trip coming up on September 9th to Myrtle Beach. They have a trip to Virginia Beach in the spring and they're going to Colorado Springs in the fall of 2019. They are also planning on maybe uh, getting, if they get enough people organizing a day trip to uh, Brown County in Nashville, Indiana for $20, which is a pretty, they're trying to do a low cost uh, day trip to just encourage a few more people to go so uh, they have received the notification of their big grant and so that uh, and that was actually increased a little bit by the state so that's good Council on Aging and Transpo both I'm sorry and uh, RSVP both got a little uh, good news with the uh, Community Foundation gave both of them a pop-up grant for $1,000, so that was uh, nice. And also, Council on Aging has, is the recipient, uh, has been a recipient, and we're going to be looking at spending uh, money from a Beacon grant that was $5,000. That That is kind of old news, but it's just now going to get spent working on cleaning the new carpets that we all put in and that's the extent of my report unless there are questions. Well you missed the fact that you and I were over there for breakfast. Well that's true we were. Yeah. The mayor made a very nice presentation uh, to the seniors. I thought uh, they were well engaged and they asked some good questions. And, uh, so yes, we met there for breakfast uh, a couple of weeks ago. Had a really nice little visit. <coughs> That's a spirited building with spirited 
people it in is. it. <coughs> it is, and, and, uh, and it, it, uh, Councilman yeah. Smith and I volunteered to flip pancakes or serve eggs, and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even go through Don't the door. Don't even <laughs> touch the kitchen. Right. That's right. I'm sorry, Ted. I forgot to mention that. Oh, that's all right. Anybody got any questions for Marty? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Chase, solid waste and animal adoption. I was unable to make both meetings. Okay. All righty. Uh, tree board EMS. Okay. The tree board met on August 2nd and the 16th. Uh, the main topics of conversation were the uh, bid submissions for the tree removal and trimming. Uh, and I believe, or shall I correct me, I believe that the, the person who is in the company that has awarded the bid has signed everything and get everything going? I'm not certain that the okay. contract has been signed yet. Okay, well we're in the process of getting it done. Uh, and after the initial bids went out, then there were several other trees, including the one that Lenny talked about on the West 7th that needed to come out. So we had supplemental bids going out for other, you know, not emergency basis, but uh, you know, a much quicker you know, basis than what we normally know to do. So we're looking at getting trees trimmed and um, removed. And also then looking forward to the, you know, in this fall sometime, getting the trees replaced uh, in order to help maintain the, uh, uh, tree city status, we have to you know, not just take everything out, but you know, replace them as we need to. So, we're looking at, the tree board is looking at doing all that. So, hopefully, you know, the next meeting I'll be able to update the board on uh, the council on what's coming out and how things are going. Okay. And no, there was no EMS meeting. No EMS meeting. Okay. Any uh, questions for Councilman Fitzwater? Thank you, Brian. Uh, water board, John. Yeah, the water board met, and uh, the news was that uh, the basic new things that Derek uh, didn't discuss. I'll cover some of the things. That, a couple of things he didn't uh, he didn't mention is that they did approve the uh, purchase of the new Ford dump truck, and then they'd also been talking about the two-year-old write-offs. And uh, the board made a motion to accept the two-year-old write-offs and not go through with the small claim courts anymore with uh, getting the money through small claim courts. It's basically it's basically a deal. It, it cost you ten dollars to get five, yeah. so it was a good business move on their part. I felt. Um, they were, did the discussion on the uh, the discussion on the unidirectional flushing program that was tabled from the previous meeting. Marvin mo made a motion to keep this on schedule for the spring of 2019 as planned, continuing this program every other year with the use of the chemical oracle before each flushing with the second from Keith and the third from Carolyn. And then there was the thing that's really gonna get you an update was presented to the board on employees taking a vacation for the month of August, none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how Derek worked that. But none were, so. Uh, yeah. I don't think he heard you, Doug. Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> there being uh, no further business, then uh, Marvin adjourned the meeting, second Carolyn, third from Keith. And that ended it. Any other questions, would be happy to answer. Anybody got anything for John? Thank you, Councilman Garrett. Okay, moving right along uh, down to ADA concerns, we Ted, have, yes. if I may yes. address that, because you may have just skipped right over it. Okay. okay. Uh, we have had a couple of concerns come to us, uh, one being about access, um, an accessible ramp at one of our pavilions, uh, so we are going to address that. And uh, also we have um, some um, ADA concerns on, uh, mm -hmm. yep, just lost it, Main Street. <laughs> uh, we've got some cracks in, in the sidewalk up there, so we are looking into that. Uh, that is, that's just very recent, came up this week, and so we are looking into uh, what we can do to address some of that cracking that's caused some upheaving of the sidewalks, and it is in our uh, uh, slope. It's within the ADA slope. so. Those are some things that we are addressing, and you as the council, since you are actually the um, ADA authority on that, I want to make sure you guys are aware that we don't have anything that needs immediate action on your part because we are taking action internally for it. The other thing that bears mentioning, too, we've been kicking around the fact, I was quite impressed with the, the Adams County folks and how they went about their jail process by creating a Q jail fund. 
10 years ago, and we've, Sean and I have been talking, I'd like to present to you folks at some time when we get everything straightened out budget-wise, uh, a CUM sidewalk fund. We start to brewing some monies for sidewalks. If we don't do that, we're never going to get on that. Uh, the one thing that's, pardon the pun, hit me like a ton of bricks when we're walking is how terrible our sidewalks are. And we still have a lot of the town that have brick sidewalks that are just in all sorts of disarray. So we would like to start with a, uh, a modest contribution uh, and we'll take a look at maybe CCB monies, whatever, to uh, start uh, collecting monies to do that. Uh, we think about downtown all a lot, but I'll tell you what, our patrons are folks who live in the, the suburbs and stuff. We need some sidewalks. And, and I will say, and on that, to piggyback off of what the mayor said, I have actually taken some time and looked and kind of at what we have existing and current uh, and how we can um, change some of our budget structure that we could adjust some of those numbers to accommodate that with our existing funds that we have. <coughs> if we were to do an additional HUME sidewalk fund, I've, I've been in looking at the DLGF information sheets to make sure we follow the steps that it, it, it is an applicable fund for us to be able to do. So there's some steps and procedures that I need to make sure of as well moving forward with something like that. But yes, we are looking at, at what we can do to move forward because it, it is a problem. We're very well aware of it. Um, and, uh, you know, with our federal ADA requirements at each one of our corners, the slopes. I mean, there's there's a lot to factor in when we start down these, this path. Well, it's a it's a 30 year process that they allow you to to address that. But hey, guess what? We can sit here and say that's a long time, but all of a sudden you turn around and you're right. You're right at uh, 11th hour. Uh, so we need to start doing doing some things in the, in regards to that. So it's called preparing um, and. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll have more for you, uh, whether we go back to a 50-50 program or 25-75 or whatever. It's going to kind of depend on how, how the funds are that we get collected. But uh, we're, we're going to start down that trail. Anybody think, think mean, that's not a good thought? Uh, I think it's a great thought. Uh, uh, great. You, sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned sidewalks, and I'm up and down 18th Street a lot. and. Uh, there is a new user of that sidewalk. What well, sounds there's like some, you? No. No. Okay. <laughs> there's some. There is a lady that I see pretty regularly in an electric scooter, and I think, well, she either didn't need the scooter earlier, or she didn't use it because she didn't want to go out in the road. But now with the sidewalk, and she's up and down there quite often. So. Well, and the other thing I would like to mention too, because we've mentioned it in a negative uh, vein a couple of times, the sign at uh, the entry into Kroger, into the uh, the big piece key sign. Yes, it has been repaired, and it looks very nice. So they did it. They they fixed what was all dented in, and the wires aren't hanging out. I, I uh, I'll just tell you, I think the word got back to them that it looked. Well, it did. So it did. It yeah. did. So uh, it was. It was fixed. And it looks nice. So thanks. Uh, and that situation down there is working out very well. The you know the new entrance situation. Now that people have gotten used to it, it's working out pretty well. I actually saw a horse and buggy go out the wrong way and had to make a U turn in <laughs> in that, and they did not violate by. By turning there, they did. He got the horse to make a U-turn with the buggy. Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but in that climate, a U-turn would be a sheep, not a horse, right? Oh, oh. Chief. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I apologize, Chief. It is getting late, isn't it? <laughs> okay. That, that takes care of the, uh, yeah, yeah. You didn't look at me. <laughs> that takes care of the EBA concerns. Uh, uh, any legal issues, uh, Count or uh, Attorney Perkins? I think you've all covered it so well. 
<laughs> Thank you. I have a motion to adjourn uh, by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> oh, my.